Hey everyone, uh, this is Daniel, and I'm just going to give a quick update about the Rent Support Conference and some of the big news that we just heard. So earlier today, we met with the Rent Support uh, Creative Director and the modding, some of the direct the guys that are going to be helping with the modding uh, teams and uh, studios and individual creators who are going to be working with Rent Support. And so just I'm going to give a couple of key highlights um, that they've been working on. Number one, um, right now it's going to be focused on track modding. Um, and that is what Rensport is focusing on at a later date, later this year, then they're going to shift to car modding. Two, track modding is going to be, the goal is that about 50% or so of the work, at least for me it looks like, let's say you have a track model for a set of Corsa, you can import that model into the Unreal Engine 5 editor and then work with that and so you're going to save quite a bit of work and it should be possible to bring rather quickly especially as we get more comfortable with the the workflow and kind of the general way that everything's going to be going should be relatively easy to bring tracks from a set of Corsa potentially other games but right now they're optimizing for a set of Corsa into Rent Sport. And another thing to consider is the fact that um, Unreal Engine level editors such as perhaps they've made uh, levels for shooter games could also then there's going to be some learning curve but they're coming from kind of a different direction um, in creating tracks and things like that so they'll be pulling kind of from two sources the set of course a modding scene and unreal um, engine 5 level creation experts and so those will both be feeding in to provide tracks for uh, rent sport uh, rent sport is going to also eventually do support car mods but we weren't provided a lot of details on this because the, frankly, the tools and things like that have not been developed yet, and we're in the process of developing those tools and things like that. Um, kind of the, another thing I want to touch on is just generally in terms of how are they going to be supporting modding? Is it going to be a storefront? Or is it going to be individual creators? So modding is going to be tied in with the VIN numbers. Essentially, every car is going to have a VIN number, and that's going to be the cars they create from Rinsport, officially created cars, as well as cars created by modders. So if you buy a car mod, for example, that car mod is going to have a VIN. This is going to cut down on piracy. You, someone can't just cut, take a car mod from a file and share it. Obviously, there's a duplicate VIN there. Boom, instantly going to be killed. Um, the VINs are going to be tied to your user account. And that will allow you, if you sell that car along with the associated VIN, it will then go to someone else's user account. But let's say you change computers or things like that. The content you own will go with you. So that's one thing that I think is quite cool, quite innovative, and a cool way to kind of do a DRM type feature without maybe some of the invasiveness that can come from DRM and um, essentially anti-piracy protection measures that can often, you know, maybe affect performance and be a real pain, encryption tools and stuff like that. Of course, they're also going to be working on some encryption stuff for, let's say, assets within a track or the cars. There is going to be some encryption tools that are provided to creators. I don't know if that's going to be optional or not but definitely it's going to be something that's going to be applied to the studio build cars and um, will be provided um, for uh, modders to use. I don't know if it will be an option to not use them for, for some reason. I don't know if there would be a benefit to not using it. Uh, some of the information now I want to get to on more of the modding side is we're looking at um, in terms of kind of performance counts and things like that. This is one area I do know a little bit of information in regards to the cars is they are looking at a limit of around 600,000 um, polys. And currently, if we compare that to like a set of Corsa, we're talking 350 poly count, or we're looking at with the, um, if we're looking at like outside of a set of Corsa, we got like the Amablista 2 Project Car Series, and that's around 200 thousand poly count. So 200,000, 350,000, maybe with content shaders patch and extended physics, it goes a bit higher, you know, 400,000, something like that. But generally, of course, the biggest thing is now we're jumping all the way up to 600,000 and potentially more with the use of Unreal Engine's Nanite technology, which could be, you know, something really cool that's added on top of this. Yeah, so that's just a little bit of technical background. Um, talking about some of the things they had on feature here, we had a couple of mods that were already ported in. They were in pretty rough state, but this game is still in alpha at, currently at this event. Um, and so there was a, you know, a, from Assetto Corsa into Rensport track that they were showing on a couple of the simulators upstairs. And that was really great. Uh, you could see how the foliage was uh, replaced with Unreal um, uh, 5 uh, foliage system, which is just, Amazing blows anything, so of course, so even with tree effects and stuff out of the water. 
and of course also they showed a track that was built within completely within Unreal Editor like a modern would and then brought in and that was along the coastline and that was also a very interesting track as well. So there's going to be a lot of options for creators and as you can see even in early alpha state they have some mods that they've brought in and so Historic Sim Studios is probably the largest studio or we are the largest modding studio right now working with uh, Rentsport. We also have multiple individual modders who are working with us um, and we're all giving feedback to Rentsport. We're meeting with them, we're giving feedback to them you know, on relatively a monthly basis and so we're going to continue to provide that information to them and give that information and so it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool I think and there's gonna be a lot of opportunities for some great things so looking forward to how that's going to work out in the long run and hopefully we can kind of be in their ear making sure that a lot of the the content and things like that are actually created and curated in a way that's you know supposed to be done so um, and let me think of anything else that I should touch on here um, been, it's been a real great visit we got some you meet some of the you know, gamer muscle, random call signs, stuff like that, that's cool. I think they're going to have videos coming out. I know I had an interview with random call signs, so I'm sure some of that. They're going to have some content to show. They also are going to get a recorded copy of driving on the tracks and things like that that are currently in Rentsport. So I'll link that video down in the video description once that's posted. Um, currently at this time, I think there's a video embargo, so this will probably be coming out a little bit after the event, but I'm going to ask actually right now and see if I can get it out maybe this weekend or so. Just touching on some of the, the basic information about kind of the modding for you guys and letting you know what's coming up. Um, they're also working on, of course, there's some proprietary assets that we're trying to see if we can get access to as the mod teams and what level we can get access to. Perhaps maybe there's a way to view what it would look like using those, let's say like the proprietary tree generation system that Rensport has. That's one thing that we've discussed. Is there a way that perhaps we can view that and then they can apply it through a system or something like that? Um, or even perhaps for certain mod teams to go through an approval process to be approved and affiliated and therefore have access to some of these tools just to lay, lift the quality of the mods even further. I mean, the ultimate goal, I mean, for us at Historic Sim Studios would be to produce mods, whether tracks or cars, at an indistinguishable level of quality from the content being produced in-house by the Rensport development team. And so that's our goal, and that's something I'm going to uh, deliver. And of course, from Historic Sim Studios, we're going to be looking to deliver content. For example, one thing that we've discussed with the Rensport team is they have the license for Hockenheim Ring. So obviously, a vintage Hockenheim Ring would make a lot of sense, and so that's something that we want to deliver and bring to the game. It's just kind of a teaser piece of content that we're going to be working on. And of course, you know, 1973, 1970s sports cars, things like that, obviously make a lot of sense for us to bring to the game. It's not something that right now the Rensport team is working on in-house, and so adding this historic content is gonna be something that's gonna fall on our shoulders, and that we're gonna make sure that we deliver for you guys, the, the racing community. We're gonna be delivering this historic content so that you can enjoy it in-game and things like that. So uh, just as always, uh, thanks for following along, of course. Check out our website at historicsimstudios.com and you can check out our Patreon page, you know, download several mods that we have available for free on there and get a taste of what we can do. And then of course, we're gonna be bringing some of those projects to Rensport as well as of course, um, any other custom projects that we develop either in collaboration with Rensport or of course just on our own to bring to the platform. So exciting times ahead, it's been a really cool weekend. I plan to have a couple more videos out before the weekend's out. Thanks, and I hope every single one of you has a fantastic rest of your week.